Why hey there, you probably found your way to this video in one of two ways. Number one, you're a subscriber of mine and you're curious to see my first video since leaving the Save the World community, which by the way, I'll always love you guys. Or number two, you're completely new to Destiny as a franchise and have no idea what in the hell you're doing, so you searched up a guide. And it's also possible that you're both. Either way, today I'm bringing you guys the ultimate starter guide for Destiny 2, which is entirely directed at new light players that have never touched Destiny before in their lives. So let's get started. So to start things off, Destiny is a game made by Bungie, the same company that created- Can you hear me? This is you and it's- so yeah, of course with that being the case, you know you're about to embark on a journey the likes of which you've never seen. Now, you may ask yourself, what kind of game is Destiny? To put it as simple as possible, Destiny is a free-to-play, sci-fi, co-op, looter-shooter, MMORPG FPS and it totally kicks ass. When first booting up the game, you're gonna be met with the character creation screen. From this screen, you're gonna see three classes to choose from. You have the Titan, the Hunter, and the Warlock. Let me make this as simple as possible. The Titan is essentially your warrior class. He does a lot of smashing, punching, and a bit of team support in the form of barriers and bubbles. He's pretty much the cornerstone of your team. The Hunter is, well, a Hunter, a class based on precise movement, dodges, badass knife throwing, and mobility. Ironically, it's the slowest of all the classes when it comes to movement, but we won't get into that just yet. And lastly, the Warlock. These floaty boys are your mage class. They use the power of the light to show expertise and abilities, healing, and slowly gliding down off of edges. Based off of these descriptions, choose which class you feel best suits you the most and begin your journey. Definitely get around to trying them all out though, as they play drastically different, and you never know which one truly might be up your alley until you're either fisting your enemy into the ground, melting your enemies with a pistol of pure flame or demolishing those in your path with space magic. After selecting and making your character, you're thrown into the Cosmodrome on Earth, being revived by a ghost sent from the Traveler. You may come across an enemy faction known as the Fallen, they may try to kill you, you may fight your way through, make it out alive, and then be sent to the Tower which is on the last city on Earth. Now, holy hell, what do I do from here? Because there's so many areas to go, so many people to talk to, where do I even begin? Well, let me help you out with that. This is the tower, the social space hub area from which every guardian will gather. Here you can speak to vendors, cash in materials from rewards from those vendors, as well as get quests from them too. Let's go ahead and go over each vendor and their function, and we'll start with every vendor in the courtyard as they're the most important. First up, let's talk to the Cryptarch. With him, you'll be able to decrypt engrams that you find on the battlefield. Engrams are essentially loot drop items you find after opening chests or killing enemies, and they contain weapons and armor once they're decrypted. Moving on from the Cryptarch, we have the Postmaster. Here is basically where all of the gear that you may have missed in a previous mission goes. Maybe you didn't see that reward lying on the floor in the last mission, so it'll be transferred here for you to claim so that you don't miss out. Just make sure that your Postmaster doesn't get too full or it may start deleting some items to make room for newer ones. Next up, we have Zavala. He's gonna be your Vanguard vendor, someone that you turn Vanguard tokens into for rewards. And those are basically earned via strikes, by the way, but more on that in a bit. He'll be a focal point for many quests and activities in the future, so keep your eye out. Completely opposite of Zavala, we have Lord Shax. This is the man behind the Crucible, which is Destiny's player versus player mode. Turn in Crucible tokens to him for rewards and come to him for Crucible quests as well. All from Lord Shax, we have the Gunsmith. Anytime you dismantle gear in this game, you are given Gunsmith materials, which can be turned in here for rewards. You can also purchase mods as well as upgrade modules, so definitely keep a lookout for those. Next one from here isn't necessarily a vendor, but it's very important for all my newer players out there. This is the Vault. Do you ever feel a little unconfident about whether you should dismantle an armor piece or a weapon? Or maybe you just don't want to hold on to it and want to have it somewhere else for later? Well, the Vault has 500 slots for you to store any kind of gear that you want to that you can come back at any time in the future to check out so I highly suggest utilizing this as much as possible. Lastly of course we have Tess Everest owner of the Eververse store. D2 is of course a free to play game and of course they have to make their money somehow. So from here you can purchase purely cosmetic items with silver basically V-Bucks if you're from Fortnite as well as any purchase of the game's expansions which will feature hundreds of hours of content and are definitely worth your money 
if you find yourself enjoying the game. You can also use a currency here known as Bright Dust, which allows you to buy cosmetics completely free of charge by earning Bright Dust through bounties or dismantling cosmetic gear that you've gotten previously. Items bought through Bright Dust will be on a weekly rotation in and out of the store, so keep your eyes peeled. Moving on from the courtyard, we have the hangar area of the tower, which will feature two more vendors. These vendors are Amanda Holiday. She will hold things like special rewards via Twitch Prime packs or even past campaign storylines if you want to play through them, as well as Saint-14 who is in charge of Trials of Osiris, which is essentially the in-game mode for Destiny's PvP. Moving on to the other side of the tower, we have the Bazaar. Here you'll find a Korra Ray who is essentially worthless, but occasionally will have a quest or two for you later down the line. Moving on from her, we have Hawthorne, which is the clan vendor. She's mostly useless unless you're in a clan, and in the case that you are in one, you'll find that she gives you rewards based off of your clan's weekly activities. Taking the stairs down from the bazaar, we have the last three vendors in the tower. First up is Ada One, who is the Black Armory vendor, and it's only useful if you have the Forsaken DLC. Come to her for crafting weapons and exotic weapon quests in the future. Aside from her, we have the Drifter, and this vendor is basically in charge of Destiny's PvEVP mode, Gambit. Just like Zavala and Shax, he's your dedicated vendor for this mode specifically, and occasionally other quests as well. Lastly, we have Benedict, who, to be honest, isn't really all that important at the moment. Moment. He'll give you quests from time to time, but as an early game player, he's probably not the most important vendor to focus on. Now that we have the tower completely understood from a vendor standpoint, let's take a look at the menu screens and go over those really quick. First up, the character screens. This will show you what subclass you are, what power level you are, as well as your currencies and the gear on your character. Down from that, we have the sparrow, ship, emblem, finisher, and emote screen, which are all completely cosmetic. Moving on over to the inventory screen, this one's pretty self-explanatory. You have all your consumables, shaders, and mods stored here. By the way, shaders change the color of your gear if you didn't know, both armor and weapons. If you don't understand what any item is in your inventory, you can always highlight said item and it will give you a pretty good description on what it is and what you can do with it. From here, we have the Triumphs menu, a menu dedicated to locking all of your accomplishments throughout the game and progressively increasing your Triumph score. The score really serves no purpose other than showing that you have no life and occasionally when approving of Triumphs, you can get bonus rewards from here as well. At the bottom of this menu, you have your seals. These are basically challenges in order for you to earn a title, which is under your name whenever a player views your character, purely cosmetic, basically 100% flex. Moving on from here, we have the collections tab, which logs every item in the game that you've come across and those that you have yet to discover. This goes for all exotics, weapons, armor, mods, and even cosmetics. The clan tab is, well, the clan tab. No more to go over there. Moving on over to the director, we have the roster tab. This will basically show everybody in your game, regardless of being in the crucible, a patrol area, or the tower. You have the map tab, which will basically show you a map of your current area, the destination tab, which serves as the world map, and the seasons tab, which is essentially a battle pass menu, and you can always buy these every season if you'd like. They have a bunch of cosmetic rewards, but everything that is an actual weapon or something that affects gameplay can be earned through the free season pass without buying it. Finally, we have the quest tab. I can't stress this enough, by the way, with the quest tab, if you're a newer player, pay attention to all the new light quests so that you can properly be guided throughout your journey on your way to the end game. There's no need to rush through this game at all. Take your time and enjoy the content. Now, taking a look at the destinations tab, we're met with a multitude of things. The tower is in the top middle, which is where we're located right now, and below that is the first accessible planet known as Earth. The rest of the destinations around Earth will be locked until you earn enough XP to access them. Keep in mind that XP is separate from your power level as your power level is based off the average power of the gear you have equipped and that's very important. XP in this game essentially allows you to level up your seasonal artifact which is something we'll talk about later as well as your season pass and unlocking these destinations early in the game. Below Earth, we have three basic modes that Destiny has to offer. We have the Vanguard Strikes, which are essentially three-man missions which feature bosses at the end with a loot chest once it's defeated, and an excellent source of leveling as a newer player. We also have the Crucible, which is Destiny's PvP mode, and features a multitude of game modes, even private matches to practice with friends, and I highly suggest staying away from here, at least for the time being, until you can get some better gear. Lastly, we have Gambit, which is player versus environment versus player, where you battle against another team for who can kill their boss first while also trying to sabotage the other team in the process. Again, you may want to stay away from this mode until you're a bit
bit more invested in Destiny as a whole. Now that we have the world map covered in the game modes, let's take a look at what a planetary map looks like and what each icon means by checking out Earth. First up, the green icon that you're going to notice on your map basically indicates the planet-specific vendor. Yes, there are more vendors outside the tower. Here you can turn in materials and do bounties to unlock gear that is exclusive to that planet. Both armor and weapons can be earned in this way for all destinations. These rainbow-looking icons on your map indicate what's called a lost sector. Basically, it's like a mini dungeon-like activity with a boss with a chest for extra loot, and they're simply just side content. You definitely should not be prioritizing these, but they're definitely fun to do from time to time and can interweave with quests in the future as well. The box-like icons on your map with a dot in the middle indicate a chest location and you can always go there and grab loot. Once it's claimed, it is claimed. You'll get stuff like glimmer, planetary materials, and weapons and armor. As you advance through your quest, you'll also begin to notice these orange icons called adventures on your map. These are basically mini story missions and are in no way main game content that you should be worrying about right now. Simply just something that you can do on the side as well for future quests in the future. Lastly, the blue diamond-like icons on your map are known as public events. These events take place for any player on that planet to participate in and end with a loot chest for your troubles. Every public event has a way of triggering its heroic difficulty and it's highly incentivized to do so as it increases your loot rewards. Everyone has a different way to do it, so I definitely suggest looking into it. Now that you know the basics of the tower, maps, and menus, let's talk about a pretty important part of Destiny, which is leveling. As I mentioned earlier, your level is determined by your power level, which is an average score of the power of all the gear that you have equipped on your character, which is your weapons and your armor. Every activity that you play in this game will grant you higher power leveled gear up until level 1000. To ensure you continue getting gear above your level, make sure at least you have high level gear in your inventory, but it doesn't have to necessarily be equipped. The fastest way to reach 1000 is by grinding Vanguard Strikes exclusively, but is completely unneeded as you'll get there eventually anyways and I recommend the slower route for first time players for sure. When grinding power levels, there's also a way for you to increase the current power level of the gear you have without swapping to another piece, although it must be of legendary rarity. And this can be done through infusing, which basically uses an upgrade module to take the power of another item and transfer it to the gear that you want to keep. However, I advise against this for the most part until you're more established in the game, as upgrade modules can be a pain to get early on. So stick to what gives you the highest level when starting out regardless of rarity, and you'll be good. Once you reach level 1000, gear in the game will no longer drop higher than your current level when you're just playing any activity that you want in the game. So how do you get past level 1000? Powerful drops. These drops are given in a multitude of ways, and the specifics to how can be indicated on the destinations tab with glowing yellow icons, basically telling you that there's an activity on this planet or this area that allows you to get powerful drops. It can be as simple as doing strikes, bounties, crucible, gambit, etc., and powerful drops will carry you all the way from level 1000 to level 1050. Powerful drop activities are also on a weekly refresh, meaning that once you do all of your powerful drops for the week, you have to wait until the Tuesday reset for you to be able to do them again. This means that you should make sure that you're doing every last one of them per week that you can before reset, and once you have them done, do things like quests that you haven't touched yet or progress the story because you're definitely not going to run out of things to do anytime soon, and you definitely should focus on things outside of just power leveling. Now, once you've reached level 1050 through your powerful drop grinding, what's next? Pinnacle Drops. These are gotten through Strikes, Crucible, Gambit, Raids, Dungeons, etc. These will advance you to level 1060. Pinnacle Drops can also be gotten before you reach level 1050, but they will act as a powerful drop if you are not progressing past that point. Pinnacles as well are on the same weekly refresh as Powerfuls, and they are the path for you reaching 1060, which is the max power level in the game for this specific season. Every season has a different power cap, so if you are watching this in a different season, whenever I say 1060, is the max, it could be different for the next season. But keep in mind that it's pretty much the same principle. Now, we can't talk about leveling without talking about the gear that gets you leveled up. First, let's discuss weapons and how they work. Weapons in this game are split into three groups, kinetic, energy, and heavy. Kinetic is any weapon that does not do elemental damage, energy is any weapon that can do elemental damage, and heavy is essentially a heavy elemental weapon. Elements in this game are pretty simple, as you just need to match your element with that of the enemy 
enemy. If you see an enemy with a purple shield, use the void element to overcharge his shield into popping and finish him off from there. This will also apply to arc and solar. Elements are also a guaranteed thing on specific weapons, meaning that there can be a guaranteed solar auto rifle every single time that you get it. However, what isn't guaranteed is the rolls that you get on that weapon. Weapons in this game, when dropped, will come with randomly assigned perks and attributes. Things like barrels, sights, mags, you get it by now. As well as a stat boost called a masterwork, which can be upgraded using materials. You may hear players talk about quote, god rolls when discussing weapons, and this just means that you have the best possible random rolls on your weapon, although you never need god rolls in this game, they definitely make things a bit easier. As a newer player, when you get a new weapon, just keep on the lookout for perks that will boost your damage and allow you to reload faster faster, is that's a really good starting point until you learn to understand all the perks in the game and how they function together. You can also assign mods to your weapons that will give you bonuses for a multitude of different things, for example dealing more damage to bosses, so definitely keep a lookout for the way that you can intertwine mods as well. Moving on from weapons, let's talk about armor. Every armor piece that you get will have a specific element, stats that will affect your character, as well as mod slots. The element of your armor impacts the specific kinds of mods that you can put on that armor piece. Stats will affect things like movement speed, super cooldown timers, and overall health among other things. And mods can range from something like finding a specific kind of ammo, or reloading weapons faster, or finding heavy ammo more often. You can also upgrade your armor to allow more mods to be slotted, although I suggest waiting more so into the end game, similar to my advice on infusing. Lastly, regarding gear, let's talk about the top tier rarity of this game, exotics. These items function drastically different from their legendary counterparts, and you can only have one exotic piece of armor and weapon equipped at a time. Exotic weapons can be something as simple as an SMG, but have the abilities to chain lightning multiple enemies for huge multi-kills. And exotic weapons will also feature things called exotic catalysts, which are direct upgrades to the way the weapon works, similar to masterworks. But these can have huge upgrades on the weapon's performance, and can change it in drastic ways, making it even better. Exotic armor essentially gives you special abilities or boost depending on the specific piece equipped. For example, if you're a hunter and have the Celestial Nighthawk, what this does is reduce your golden gun to only have one shot, but gives an extreme boost to its damage, making it even better for bosses specifically. You can earn exotics in this game either through random world drops, quests, or through a special vendor in the game known as Xur that visits every weekend at a random location, and you can find his location via this website right here. You can use your legendary shards to buy specific exotic gear off of them, as well as random exotic engrams as well. Now, throughout this guide, we've gone over all the basics of Destiny 2. The beginning of your character's creation, the tower, vendors, maps, menus, leveling, and gear as well. To end this video off though, I'd like to talk about seasonal content and how it works in Destiny 2. New seasons in Destiny are introduced every two to three months, and with the addition of new seasons come new season passes, more power levels to grind, seasonal artifacts, and new story content, as well as different public events among a lot of other things. Now, we've already gone over stuff like the season pass and how power leveling works, but we haven't really gone over the seasonal artifact as of yet, and this is very important. Seasonal artifacts are given to you at the beginning of every season via a specific quest or a mission. For this season, Season of Arrivals, if you're a new player, all you have to do is unlock the planet Io via gaining XP and do the first quest which is ending in you getting the artifact. These artifacts will give you a bonus power level based off of the XP that you earn, meaning that you can go beyond just 1060 as well as gaining extra seasonal mods from the seasonal artifact. Make sure that you get the seasonal artifact as soon as possible and begin leveling it to sift through which mods you like to gain from it as well as the power level boost. Things like barrier and overload mods will be very useful to you in the high end missions like nightfalls, but if you're not near playing that content as of yet, you could do something as small as pulse rifle reload if you like, but you can always reset the artifact as well, so no pressure on which ones you'd want to unlock first. Now, ending on that note, that is pretty much it for the ultimate starter guide for Destiny 2 in this video. Of course, there's plenty of stuff that was left out in this guide, and if I wanted to go into specifics, we'd probably have a 10 hour plus guide on our hands, but basically I wanted to make this video to provide a basic stepping stone to help get you into the Destiny franchise as a whole. When I first got back into it, I was super confused, I was frustrated, and it basically almost led me to leaving the game because there was so much stuff that I didn't understand. 
happen. However, I do hope that this guide did help you in some way, and if you still have questions, you can definitely leave those in the comments down below, and I will be answering them for weeks to come. But I do hope that this guide could help you guys out, so definitely let me know in the comments down below what you thought of it, as this is my first Destiny 2 video in a very long time, and from here on out, Destiny 2 content will be posted on this channel. If you watched up into this point, thank you so much for the support, I really do appreciate it, and let me know any feedback you guys have down in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, leave your questions if you have them, and I'll see you guys next time.